When Targ's first release, I didn't really want to play him because he was looked uh, to be way too broken and easy to play. But then I realized how broken he actually was and I thought it would be fun to try to optimize in how few turns it was possible to beat a campaign with him. I got it down to about 5 and it seemed like 4 was possible with slightly more optimized cheese. But then I got busy with farm stuff and uh, humankind released. So I dropped it for a while. And then CA nerfed the rampage mechanic in the latest patch and it seemed like the dream was dead. These were the changes CA made to the Torx campaign. They fixed the Juggernaut rating stance, not increasing movement speed after you have after you raise the settlement, and they lowered the maximum amount of rampage you could get to a maximum of 50. Putting a cap of 50 on the amount of rampage you can earn that uh, per battle doesn't do anything to stop the infinite rampage from happening. And the bug fix to the rating stance is actually a huge help in the early turns to set up the infinite rampage. We start our campaign by merging our caster into our army and moving down to generic Dark Age village number one and just auto resolving it and establishing a hearthstone. We grab skills for Tarax and the caster. And we construct a shaman building. We'll get the money back next turn. And we recruit as much as we can. And we end turn. Now we are one third through our campaign. Now the next step is to get our hands on 20k in cash. And we do this the beastman way. Through diplomacy. Then we want to make our way over to generic Dark Elf Village number 2. We want to do this while using the least amount of movement and still being sent in the right direction after raising it. After that we go into Juggernaut stance and we should be able to make it over to generic Dark Elf City number one. Grab some skills and lay siege to the settlement. I prefer grabbing Valtite on the Shaman because it's best for dealing with low armored infantry and archers. It can also be used on walls, which is pretty huge. With these siege battles. It's all about the approach. Huh? The AI is really bad at defending sieges, so it's usually easier than just fighting them in an open battle. You just make use of spells and archers to kill most of the enemies while the AI does nothing back. And then we just use the stalk on our own guards to climb over the walls on the other side. Once we're inside, we can use Tarx, the Gorgon, and the Minotaurs to pick off the singular units the AI keeps sending at us. And then the rest of the battle is fairly straightforward as we just continue to pick off enemies with magic and archers and kill the strays with Tarx.
Then we just move in for the kill. And trigger army losses. Then we loot and race and make our encampment. We grab the talents and finish a ritual for some extra cash. Then we destroy our recruitment building to send a message. Just as Cortez sank his ships when he arrived in Mexico. We are also about to commit a genocide, so there's a lot of beautiful parallels going on there. We grab two copies of the champion's essence and give them to Torx and the Bray Shaman. We end our turn and we're almost done with the campaign. Just one more turn left. Then we attack the next Dark Elf Village in such a way that raising it will put us in range of the next city. We declare war on Malekit and we siege the city. Next city battle is more of the same. We use magic to thin them out and Tarox and his cow gang takes care of the rest. We raise a hurt zone and achieve our first rampage. We move up and attack the next Dark Elf village. This one has a small garrison so it's slightly harder than the other battles. But with good use of our archers and by using targs to distract the enemy, it should be fairly straightforward. Oh, 
We have room for one more battle before we have to reset our rampage. And we move up to the Skaven settlement and destroy it. Now it's time to reset our rampage for the first time. We do this by fighting two battles without resetting any movement. We end our rampage by repeatedly replenishing our movement. Then we attack Malekith and we have will have enough movement range left to siege Nagarond. The siege is pretty straightforward if you just use a little more stalk and wizard cheese. Now that we've reset our rampage, it's time to splat some rats. We move up to the next Skaven village and have a very hard fought battle. Ah. 
Now it's time to reset our rampage for the second time. We use up all our movement and attack the settlement. We attack the Skaven Lord and we regain our rampage. You've now reached the point in the campaign where we reach the max 50 points of rampage per battle. We can just use up all our movements and win one battle and we have our rampage back. Infinite rampage has been achieved. Now we just have to reset after every two battles and the game gets pretty easy. We got stronger with every battle while the enemy remains the same. And on turn three there's this awkward stage where most faction leaders have rampage. left their settlements and the minor factions haven't had enough time to recruit units. So most battles are pretty free. And we're back. Fun to fight them, but I didn't forget. Oh my god, it keeps... Off. 
final battle is pretty straightforward with a juice up Tarox and a full stack of regiments of Renown that have buffs like regeneration that I found at sea. Oh, I lost my first unit. The brass bull roars in triumph, for the ritual is complete. With the cold one slain, an age of nightmares shall be unleashed upon this mortal world. The herd bellows victorious. Endless slaughter awaits them. That was Starox in three turns. Most of it after the after setting up the infinite rampage wasn't that interesting. There wasn't really much to fight. But if you do want to see parts of it, I can uh, always upload them if there is interest.